Hello and welcome to this week's What's Hot. And what's hot is currency trading because there will always be those prepared to sell the nation sterling in order to make a quick buck. Well, I can't comment too much on foreign exchange. It's well above my pay grade, but I do wish that I'd kept my leftover Croatian kuna after my recent trip to the Adriatic because the kuna has probably has more value than the pound at the moment. Well, let's go from foreign exchange to equity trading. Let's have a look at the FTSE 100, our index of leading shares. Here's the five year chart. Now you can see it's made a recovery since the lockdown in 2020, but the recovery not so evident in our junior index the aim market not so resilient. So it may be that here we are in September and you might want to rip Van Winkle it out, sleep till the end of the year and hopefully when you wake up, there'll be no worries about interest rates, recessions, inflation and our new Chancellor of the Exchequer's decision. Which brings me on to Eve, the stock. Eve, because in the summer it said all options were open to the business, including selling it. Now, no firm offers have been made yet. And at the end of August, it had a million pounds in its coffers. And what was the value of money these days? But let's not get started on that. Now, I have been a consumer and a seller on the Music Magpie platform for almost a decade. And in fact, in between jobs, I remember selling my surplus DVDs and CDs was my only income for a couple of months. So I am an advocate of this business. However, the recent RNS was populated with typical Northern honesty, the company telling investors that the uptick in performance in the second half of the year that it had predicted back in July, whilst evident wasn't as strong as it had been envisaged. But let's see how the sell your old mobile phones and get cash in a kiosk collaboration with Asda works. That is another string to their many bows. OK, let's have a snapshot of who's in and who's out in the corporate world and those who are pretending to leave and actually are not leaving whatsoever. So we have Andy Bell, not Andy Bell of the Erasure fame, but the founder of AJ Bell. Now, he's a 22.8 percent shareholder in the business that he founded a couple of decades ago. He's leaving as chief executive at the end of September. He was then going to take up the reins of the deputy chair, but that's when the current chair and the regulator got a bit hot and bothered. And there was heated discussions about corporate governance, so he no longer has any executive positions, but he is being kept on in terms of a consultancy role to the business that he founded all those years ago. To Boohoo now and the train lines, Sean McCabe will start his job as Boohoo's group new chief financial officer. He's replacing Neil Cato. He's been at Boohoo for 11 years. He's not leaving. He's taking up the role of executive director. Let's go to Unilever now and the chief executive, Alan Hope. He's to retire as chief executive at the end of 2023, following investor discontent over alleged lackluster performance. Here's where the share price was in January 2019 when he joined, and it's more or less at the same level now. And under his stewardship, the company failed to buy the health consumer arm of GSK, which brings me on to GSK. Look what's happening at boardroom level there. The drug makers hired Julie Brown as its chief financial officer to work alongside chief executive officer Emma Wormsley, putting two women in charge of the UK drug maker Bloomberg, saying that this is a milestone in an industry dominated by men. Well, I hope you're well. It's been a tumultuous two weeks. I'll see you the same time next week.